All right. Well, welcome, welcome, one and all, to Pillars of Eternity 2, Dead Fire. Oh, my gosh. We're broadcasting live over the old Twitch land, twitch.tv slash Lyle Schnub. But you, gentle viewer, may be watching from... Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, I forgot I left those on. All right, I guess we still have those on. Someone has just followed. I don't know who, but thank you. Thank you, follower. Oh, shit. How do we even check? Oh, this is great. Oh, this is real good, isn't it? <laughs> oh, man. Well, we don't know. There's just a cliff racer screaming at us to let us know that it has occurred. Oh, God. I hope the audio levels on that is okay. Anyway, this is going to be archived uh, on YouTube. Perhaps that's where you're watching it. And uh, you know what? Hey, always feel free to check out the old Twitch channel for some live shit. Uh, I'll archive it eventually. It, it's got 30 days of being uh, available on Twitch, I believe. Something like that. So I've got 30 days to archive stuff. Hopefully I'll have them up a little bit quicker than 30 days. Good lord. And most like a week or two in case something god-awful occurs. Anyway, holy crap, Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire! Let's check out the options here. I did a little bit of testing, so I have heard this beautiful music before. Oh, and it is beautiful. And let's check out all these here. We've got auto-pause stuff. I think I've successfully mimicked all of my old settings. Now, fingers crossed, we do not need to go into all of the old shit from, um... Oh, good God, from into Pillars 1 to do anything to get, like, a save set up. Worst case scenario, we just boot this shit down and load that up to import our save. Figure out all the fun stuff there. But yeah, we've got pauses here, combat starts, stop party movement, all that shit, you know. Finding some stuff. Uh, graphics, yep, yada, yada, yada. Um, let's see. Anything here interesting that we changed? No, there's nothing especially amazing here. Uh, sound, yep. Oh, and this, look at this. Oh, I saw this. Sea shanties? Ooh, that got me a little excited. That got me a little bit excited. Controls, yep. I think we mostly kept that all default. Uh, we kept this in line with Pillars 1, because that just makes more sense to me. Achievements, well, we don't need to know that. Set PoE 1 game stats? I don't know, I think this is like you create your own... Yeah, create new history, something like that. I don't know, we're not going to do that. We're just going to click Create New Game, and hopefully it will prompt us. I still have Pillars 1 installed, so fingers crossed. Well, here we go, into the breach. Oh my gosh, of course we're going to be on Path of... The oh, look, yeah. We're going to be on Path of the Damned, of course! Path of the Damned throws the largest number of enemies against the player, makes enemies more powerful, and utilizes the most devious AI tactics. Warning, this option can't be changed in-game. It is only intended for players who want the most punishing encounters. Yes! Punish me, Daddy! Yes, please! Veteran difficulty is for players who need more enemies and more aggressive enemy tactics to feel challenged. Yeah, yeah, we know about all this, and we want the top shit. We don't want Trial of Iron, though. I t I'm not good enough for that. I can do Path of the Damned, but Trial of Iron in Expert Mode? Eh, probably not. Probably not. Let's see. In Trial of Iron, yeah, only one save file is kept. If the party is killed, the file is deleted and you must start again. No thank you. And Expert Mode disables, like, tutorials and little helper things, so... We don't really want that, especially with the new mechanics with the boats and all of that. The ship sailing stuff. Yeah, this is a pirate game, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if you heard about that, that this, there's some piracy going on here. A little high seas sailing. Anyway, level scaling. Level scaling provides a consistent level of challenge to players while, when exploring Deadfire. While enabled, enemies within a scene will adjust their level up or down depending on the player's char on the player character's level relative to the intended level for the scene. Now that's interesting because before it used to only go upwards. So if you wind up in an area that's too difficult, it'll scale downwards. Huh. Because on the one hand, I like it when, when things scale upward to be more challenging for you, but um, I don't know if I want it to be easier. I prefer to, like, bang my head up against it. Well, then again, on Path of the Damned, I guess that, that does navigate some issues in the first game, where uh, sometimes you wouldn't, like, especially when you got into the open world, you weren't sure exactly where the hell you were going and all that stuff, and you could wind up in, oh, good lord, some god-awful place. Jeez, and Pete. Anyway, we will do... Um, Hmm. Ooh, critical all or critical path only? Oh, shit. Huh, let's just go all. Oh, look. Oh, yeah. God, I'm dumb as hell. Look, we can only scale upwards, so let's do that. Huh. Dope. All right. Fantastic. Yeah, I think that's great. Start game. Ooh, are you excited? I am fucking excited as hell. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Now, this one is, like, super voice acted by uh, the critical role people. 
among other folks. Ooh. Oh, shit. Oh, God, it would be so bad if the game just crashed. Now, look at that symbol right there in the bottom right. That's the symbol that appears out of old Big Statue McGee's head from the trailers I've seen. It's going to pop right out of there and shine a shining light down on us, and he'll wink down and smash all of our shit. Good lord. Now, brace for impact. The, uh, the audio, if this is like a cutscene, you know how it is. Sometimes cutscenes play super loud, and I'm not able to edit this Aora. stuff. A world where mortals live, die, and are reborn through the turning of the wheel. The cycle of reincarnation watched over by the gods and made possible through pillars of a mystical substance known as Audra. Five years ago, you traveled from your home to the Deerwood, a nation that had waged war against the incarnated god of light, Aethys, resulting in his destruction. The country suffered from a plague of Hollowborn, infants born without souls, that many believed was punishment for killing a god. Mm, In an heavy ancient, shit. secluded ruin, you witnessed a secret ritual that inadvertently transformed you into a watcher. One who can see and speak with souls. The ritual also gave you horrible visions. Waking nightmares of a past life that threatened your sanity. To put them to rest, you pursued the man who had led the ritual, a seemingly immortal agent of the gods, known as Theos Ix Arcanon. <laughs> what a dick. With divine assistance, you confronted and defeated Theos, ending your visions and resolving the Hollowborn crisis. In so doing, you also learned the great secret that Theos had protected that the ancient empire of Anguith had transformed themselves into gods. Your visions finally put to rest, you retired to the castle of Cad Nua, built atop a massive statue of pure Audra, where you ruled in relative peace and prosperity. Oh great, this must be it. This is where it's going to play the opening trailer. Made a nice story. You fixing up that old keep? Lifting the curse? <laughs> Must have told it a hundred times. But something got to gnaw at me. Thinking the spirits there weren't really at rest. Maybe the gods weren't finished with us. Dude, Matt Mercer is so fucking good. I used to dream that when my god came back, he would forgive us. Yeah, remember him, the giant dickless man. Last the trouble with dreams. See, there it is! Oh shit, it's like Dragon Ball. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> oh shit, oh no! My perp's leaving me! Oh, I'm losing my mojo! Oh shit. They got the after and so you wake to a sleepless world, the in-between of life and death. Follow your memories. You have been here before. Yo, do I control this? Oh shit, I do. Look at me, I'm walking on the fucking slipstream, baby. Oh, jeez. Can I, like, become reincarnated? Is that, like, the reasoning for being able to re-roll your character, essentially? Man, we got stepped on. Damn. That's a fetish for sure. Look at that. The pillars of eternity in the background. 
Oh, you have seen past the shroud. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. Huh. Yeah. So far, it hasn't, like, taken our uh, details from the first game where he asked for us to make anything. See souls, knows their pasts, and the souls see them back. Who the hell are these people? I mean, that's Mayorwald, of course. They gave him a portrait, though. Yeah, I don't think he had one, did he? A dubious honor, inheriting a fortress both broken and cursed. Oh shit, I think they changed the voice on our talking chair. They Okay, our talking chair definitely did not have a face before. Also, yo, you know how like in third person games like at the end of Mass Effect, the beginning of Destiny 2, they have you slow walk? Dude, this is the CRPG version of the slow walk. The forced narrative uh, slow walk. <laughs> what is a god? Hmm? A higher power? A rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked? Man, who are all these folks walking around here? The gods aren't real, but something else entirely. Mm. Something created Yavara. by people. Yeah, that's when we got the big ass revelation. Man, they're really hitting us with all the heavy shit right here, making sure we're up to up to snuff. Man, they got the fucking Mario 64 here in the background though. <laughs> it's like we're about to fight and Bowser. Did you ever consider that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? Jeez, they sure did skip a lot of shit in the middle, like the Duke getting murdered. That was pretty important. When he got murdered, Lady Webb, she's out. <laughs> Oh shit, we're being sucked into this shit. Oh no. Aethys is great Let the vape world cloud. See. Let them decide what to do. Suck me in, baby! Vape me! Ooh. Oh god. The wheel has turned again, Watcher. Come. Hmm. How's the audio levels? Hopefully they're good. Hopefully, they are damn good. Hmm. Alright, man. Hopefully, the, the loading screens also aren't as bad as uh, Pillars 1 were toward the end. Because, once again, not, not going to be able to edit anything out here. We're just raw-dogging it. Is that the right term for that? I don't know. Ooh. Oh, shit. An aged dwarf shares this strange floating platform with you. His face is creased by so many wrinkles that his features lie buried amid shadowy pockets of skin. Still, the dwarf's well-practiced habits have left telltale tracks of a welcoming rictus across his visage. Oh, man. So, wow, this is, it's even narrating the, um, the regular text. I was expecting that I would have to do that. I knew that uh, dialogue and stuff was, but I d had no idea that there was an actual narrator. Dope. All right, man, look at us. We look like some kind of slime monster. Jeez. All right, continue. You can see his smile coming before it blooms, reshaping the dwarf's face from a hanging sack of flesh into something resembling an oddly carved Mary Gore, replete with unhealthy bumps and discolored splotches. Man, they still got that fucking exposition. Mm. It sounds like this is, uh, the same voice actress who did Sagani, huh? Alright. Okay. He doesn't look like much of a dwarf, but hey. Jeez, look at this. This is some fancy-looking shit, huh? Can we, uh, pan the camera around here? No, we can't. Camera's locked on us. Here, let's turn down the music just a bit. Oh, shit. Can't save either. Uh, let's see. Voice is all the way up. We'll bump down effects a little bit. And music a bit. Because the narrator is actually quite a bit soft-spoken, huh? Here we go. Didn't even notice it! Let's go about ten, ten more percent. <laughs> Shit. There we go. Okay. Man, I keep instinctively going to, like, do a box select. Alright, let's zoom in. Look at these fantastic new graphics. Look at this. Damn, that is beautiful. Alright. What's up, dude? Here, can I hold tab and look at his name? The What's up? The creases of the dwarf's face tighten into a smile as he gives you a courteous nod. Oh, man, that is good. 
Oh, look at all this. Okay, let's zoom out now. That way we can see. Oh, he's coming with me. Table for two. Oh, no, he just disappeared. Did he go inside of me? Is he... Oh, no, he's hiding. Oh, I see you. The creases of the oh, dwarf's okay, face okay. tighten into a smile as he gives you a courteous nod. Oh, man, they got the big hands here. Oh, he's not hiding. He's just following me. Okay. Whose hand do you think this is? Remember we saw a big skull, presumably belonging to Abaddon, back in the White March? With a big pillar of Audra inside of it? A pillar Shit. of eternity? Oh, hmm. fuck. We gotta play Gwent? Oh, damn. All right. <laughs> Tutorials. <laughs> All right, interact. Uh, what do I do? I... Okay. View. Click on highlighted objects to interact with them. Each type of object has its own type of basic interaction. Doors will open or close. Locked objects will be unlocked. Items will be picked up. People in the world will speak with you, and enemies will be attacked. Okay. Man, what a spooky-looking visage. You think uh, this is Barath? Oh. This might be Barath. I don't know. How would it know? No, we probably haven't gotten to that point yet where it loads in our data. Because so far, all the stuff that has occurred has all been um, uh, things that would have occurred normally throughout any playthrough, right? So it wouldn't know yet that we have uh, sided with Barath and all that shit. All right, here we go. Sit. Oh, right. Please. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm dumb. Thank you for joining us, Watcher of Cad Nua. The Gaunt Woman seated at the table is clad in time-worn black armor that seems too massive for her to move in. Oh shit, the Pallid Knight. Okay, so Pallid Knight is, if I remember correctly, she is, uh, or it is associated with, um, Barath, the, the god, the duality god of life and death. All right, continue. A pale, slender neck rises from the gorget, topped by a hollow face. The milky skin stretched across it is delicate and translucent, like parchment that has been scraped clean too many times. Ugh. She is preoccupied with the arrangement of cards on the table between you. With each movement, her armor squeaks and groans as though bearing an incredible weight. She places a final card, gives a nod of satisfaction, and raises her eyes to meet yours. Hmm. Your brush with the Divine has drained you of your powers, fractured your memories. Look upon these cards. They represent the courses of your life. You uh, will know best how they flowed. Well, guess Arrange what? Them oh, to shit. What you Sorry. I've already got a deck of cards right here in my pocket. Oh, yeah, that's right. I played the first one. Examine the cards and choose your legacy. Oh, shit. Oh, look. Okay, here we go. Import POE1 save. Oh, look at this. Look at all this stuff that you could do. Oh, they have, like, pre-created uh, ones. Everything is bad. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Just, uh... Yeah, because I remember that there was a lot of times when, like, you would play uh, Mass Effect 2 after Mass Effect 1 and stuff, and you'd want... Oh, I wonder what it would be like if literally everybody died, or you play Mass Effect 3 after Mass Effect 2, and say, what if everybody died that could die? Because, yeah, only... Man, we're getting... Let's not talk about Mass Effect in case, you know, there's some Mass Effect spoilers going on. Shit. All right. Select which history took place during Pillars of Eternity, or select a Pillars of Eternity endgame save to import. If you wish to create a custom history, you may do so from options on the main menu. If you are having difficulty finding your endgame save from Pillars of Eternity, make sure your complete game complete dot save game is in the appropriate Pillars of Eternity save game directory. Oh, fuck. I hope it is. Let's see. Oh, there we are. Lyle Lighthouse, it says. I don't know why it says that, but that looks like us. Well, let's delete it. <laughs> why is that an option? Man, we played a lot of Pillars of Eternity, didn't we? Look at this shit. Oh, look, we've got some comments here on the phone. Uptime, so yeah, yeah, sorry, we don't have a, I don't have a bot thing set up. I don't know how. Um, SF Walling, I'm, I'm guessing that's, yeah, that's Steven. Good luck with your Twitch career. Wishing you the best. Oh, thank you. Aw, oh, thank you. Uh, let's see. Lighthouse, Act 4, yep. 13, yeah, good lord. 201 hours. Jesus. What a... Good lord. The, the videos only went on for about 163. I guess I did a lot in between videos. Left it up, running, shit like that. That's a bad habit of mine. Anyway, let's shut the fuck up and load this. Does everything appear to be in order? Uh, yeah. 
Sure, that's exactly what happened. My save game. I hope you like it. Just hand pass her a USB key, keychain. <laughs> Fucking yeah, that's Good. how it went. Welcome to the beyond. I am Bera. Yes. One half anyway. Nailed it. She points a finger in the direction of the dwarf who led you here. Right. Though the movement is slight, her gauntlet squeaks like a rusty hinge. I forgot the other half of Barath was usually a dwarf. Oh, okay, let's continue. The dwarf's rictus returns as he nods in the woman's direction. Dude, look at this wrinkly old sausage man. Oh my god. Look at that. Man, everybody's got portraits now. Everybody. All right, continue. The gods offered you boons in exchange for resolving the Hollowborn crisis. What did you do with the souls? Hmm. Barath, return the souls to the wheel. Yeah, that's what I did. Oh, look. Oh, shit. Yeah, someone was telling me about this in the comments um, on my uh, post-playthrough -play review of Pillars 1. Is that uh, this was a feature in uh, Tyranny. How it was so dense with lore that you can now just hover over things and it'll tell you everything. So yeah, like I said, Barath, god of death, cycles, doorways, mortality, and inevitability. The keeper of the cycle of life and death. Barath is thought to seek claim, to seek to claim the lives of those who have lived past their time. According to folklore, Barath is seen most often in the form of the Pallid Knight, or the Usher. And that's him, Usher, right there. He's about to sing to us. Two skeletal characters who lead such people to their deaths by way of challenge or trickery. Right, and we pledged to Barath because my logic was, it seems the most, um... Like, nothing terrible is going to happen. There's no potential for anything fantastic and good to happen. But nothing really god-awful is going to happen either. At least so it seemed. Alright, what did you do with the souls? Return the souls to the wheel. Yep. Which is this selection, right? Hmm. Yeah, right? Restore the souls to the Hollowborn. No, that's not what we did. Strengthen the souls of the Deerwood. Nope, we did not do that. Disintegrated the souls. Nope. Dispersed the souls. Nope. Gave them to Woodica. No, no, no. Like hell we would do that. Okay. Yeah, we gave them back to the wheel. Can we just select this here? Oh, no. Okay, so this is it telling us what we did. And now we get to reshape history if we, if, if we want. Similar to in Pillars 1, how you could rewrite history. We're able to do it now here. Which, you know, hey, fair fair enough. Retcon your, your ending if you want. All right, so yeah, return the souls to the wheel. That's what we did. Tell me, do you remember when we last met? Oh, fuck. Oh, look. This is a result of your choices you made in Pillars of Eternity. Oh, shit. Oh, that's good. Yes, in the Hall of Stars in Twin Elms. That's true. I, I think so. I pledged myself to do your bidding in exchange for your aid. Remember, we needed Barath's help, or one of the gods' help, to reach the bottom of the pit, or else we would die horribly. I don't remember. Remain silent. Uh, yeah, I, th I think so. I pledge myself to do your bidding in exchange for your aid. I wonder if Barath appears here for everyone. Must be, right? Because it didn't yet ask us to import. Everyone must get Barath. Oh, man, I feel like we made such a good choice there at the end. All right. And though you could have broken your pledge when you defeated Theos at Sun and Shadow, you did not. Admirable. Hey, I'm a man of my word, usually. <laughs> she delicately places a card on the table. A bell in a tower. Her fingertips slowly drag away from the card, faintly creaking as they retreat across the table. You had need of the gods once before. Now it seems we have need of you. Ooh, gosh, the writing is still delicious. The being that occupied Odnua's statue beneath your castle was the dead god, Aeothus. Of this, we are certain. What we do not know is what his intentions are. Hmm, right. Aeothus was killed by uh, the god hammer bomb um, that uh, you have a party member in Pillars 1 who uh, has ties to that. Let's see, what does it say here when we mouse over Aeothus? We should definitely learn a little bit more about what they t say about Aeothus here in Pillars 2. Because Aethys is like the big antagonist? Maybe? I don't know. It seems that way, but maybe not. Aethys, god of rebirth, redemption, dawn, spring, and light. Ironic that this is a bad dude, right? Traditionally shown as a man bearing a candle and wearing a silver crown. Believed to have possessed the body of the Raid Saren farmer, Wydwin, during the Saints' War. 
and been destroyed along with Widewin at the end of the war. He recently reformed his essence in the statue of Maros Nua, beneath Cad Nua, that's our stronghold. In the process of pulling himself from the endless paths, he destroyed the castle and left the Watcher of Cad Nua at the brink of death. Alright, continue. Oh shit! Yo, what if we left the dragon alive down there at the bottom? I wonder if it would- if it could come out! Oh dude, I bet that is something that could have happened. but we killed it! We killed it! Oh shit! Alright, continue. Though Aethys stole a large fragment of your soul, I you were strong this. enough to survive the onslaught and enter the in-between. Oh shit, some limbo action? We've ne I've never heard of the in-between, or at least I forgot about it. The in-between refers to the shadow world that souls briefly wander after death on their way to the beyond. It has been described as a hazy landscape, empty but for the glow of other souls, Audra and Watchers. Oh shit, there's other Watchers in here? This is the space that Watchers peer into when they observe and speak to lost souls and soul fragments. Even the gods cannot reach it. Oh, huh. Okay. You and he are still connected. He has chosen a body made of living Audra, perfused with the power of thousands of souls, including yours. It should be little difficulty for an experienced Watcher to find him. Hmm. Hold up. If the gods aren't allowed here at the in-between, we are at the in-between right now, right? How is Barath here? Huh. Maybe the other gods aren't allowed and Barath is super special in that way? Maybe. Am I dead? Why don't you just do it yourself? I'm not going anywhere near that thing. Nah, I don't think I'm dead. I think I'm something in between, right? Because, hey, if I died, I could have just reloaded my save. Uh, why don't you just do it yourself? I'm not going anywhere near that thing again. Now, let's find out. Let's let's get some more information. Am I dead? No. But neither is your body truly alive. Your lungs draw breath, your heart pumps blood. But your flesh is as soulless as a hollowborn. That is, until I return you. Hmm. Okay, I like that that she that they are still acknowledging the Hollowborn crisis. I wonder how many years after this is from uh, Pillars One. Like, has has it been long enough that most people have recovered from the Hollowborn crisis? No, must not be right. Cause I would have died. How long do elves live? Fuck if I know. All right, continue. She delicately places a card upright on the table. The art depicts souls flowing out of a pillar of Audra. Well, I'd like to find him as much as you would. He destroyed my castle and killed who knows how many people around it. I've had enough of dealing with the gods, all of you. Why should I care about any of this? Let's get on with it. It doesn't matter how much you threaten me, I'm not doing this. Huh. Well, you know what? Hey, I want to kill him too. Yeah, he blew my shit up. I'm... You know how much gold I poured into that castle? How many loading screens of waiting and stuff I poured into that stronghold? That stupid-ass stronghold? Good lord. Man, it was dumb. Except it gave me some real good resting bonuses. Damn, that... Now that, I'll say, was dope as hell. So yeah, let's go kill a giant dickless man. I know. It is my business to know. 322 in Cad Noah and your surrounding lands. Huh. Damn. Barath is pretty fucking dope. Their souls remain in Aethys still. You have the power to save them. Serve me and I will return you to your body. Or don't. And return to the wheel. Oh, is this like our opportunity to re-roll our character? Huh. <laughs> I'll take the wheel. <laughs> Barath, take the wheel! No, no, no. Let's get on with it. I'll... Dude, pfft. Don't... Don't try to fix what ain't... What isn't broken. I mean, I am completely broken I, my bones have been shattered but but you know hey it was a good character build we're still going with a gunslinger dual guns especially now that you can dual wield them in this one i think i'm pretty sure all right then let's get on with it good before you return to aora as my herald you must remember who you were the last whisper of life in death for a moment the sockets of her eyes darken leaving the pits of a death's head gazing out at you hmm when you can picture your own face, 
the beyond will lead you back to your own kind, to the world of mortals. <laughs> Every time that fucking cliff racer has come on, it's made me jump. Fuck me. I thought I had turned them off. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. End dialogue. Oh, shit. We got some loading. Oh, man, look at this. So we can actually fully recreate our character as whoever. Well, it feels wrong to do anything but. Hmm. Yeah, let's just create our, our same-ass character roughly. Roughly the same. You know, hey, we, we may change a few things along the way. Let's see. The place of men in society varies from culture to culture. In all societies, there are exceptions to the rule. And men can be found in a wide variety of stations and professions. Right. So, yeah, we, we've, we saw this a lot in Pillars 1. There's a lot of different cultures. Cultures in Pillars are very important. Um, the, the sort of way a character behaves is more defined by their culture rather than their race. So, as an elf, I don't just, like, my character, like, hypothetically wouldn't just behave like any fucking tree wood elf or whatever it's called. It would be more like um, someone from the Deadfire, from a culture, a subculture within the Deadfire Archipelago, because, man, I, I picked Deadfire Archipelago, and holy shit, how lucky was that? All right, we're going with male. Let's see, the same thing here, it should say. Look at that. Man, it's actually loading in a bit. A woman's role in the aura is largely dependent on where she is from. Right, yeah, importance of culture. In all societies, there are exceptions to the rule. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, we're going to be a dude. Humans, commonly called folk, are the most common race in the Deerwood. Yep, we know all about that. Let's actually look at uh, some of these bonuses here. Huh. Oh, look, it actually gives us uh, some sort of general... Uh, it qualifies some of the amounts that we can have. Huh. Weak, average, strong, fantastically powerful. Man, we had some fantastically powerful dexterity, I think. Right? In that recovery speed. All right, resolve and might. So this will help us when we get party members, us to, like, glance over this stuff, right? Because I, I, I believe some of it changed. The mighty Almawa are the largest of the Kith races and are commonly found in or near oceans. Though not truly aquatic, they have an affinity for water, and many of their civilizations, such as Rawatai, are based on naval dominance. They are known for their unparalleled strength. Dwarf... By virtue of land covered or end number of colonies settled, dwarves are the most well-traveled race in the world. They are commonly found in the Deerwood, the Valian Republics, and almost any colonized land. Dwarves are known for their great strength and tenacity. Right, two might, but minus one dex and plus one constitution. What you would expect of a dwarf in a fantasy setting. And this is what we were. Man, we didn't look like this, though. I say that, but hey, maybe the character creation was bad. The, the like, visual aspect of it was real bad in uh, Pillars of One. It was, uh, it was very much a uh, use your imagination <laughs> sort of thing. Elves are the dominant race in Air Glanfoth and the White That Wends, and are extremely common in the Deerwood and Edair. Elves are known for their speed and intelligence, as well as commonly isolationist nature. All right, we'll probably go with this again, because once again, dexterity is very good for us. We're going to go with dual pistols. Dexterity affects the character's action speed with all attacks, spells, and abilities, and contributes to the reflex defense. It represents a combination of hand-eye coordination, swiftness, and overall grace. Oh, okay, so it says different things. Oh, shit, this reminds me of New Vegas, how, like, different, uh, it's like, Oh, well, you're darn tootin' smart. Well, you're a little bit of a dum-dum there, pal. When, it, when you're looking at the Vitamatic Vigor Tester, whatever it was called. Clumsy, agile, incredibly graceful. Oh, it'll probably tell us when we're... Does it tell us down here attributes? No. Maybe once we uh, get further along here. But yeah, we'll probably be an elf again. Let's see. Godlike. Oh my gosh. They're supposed to be very rare, but fucking... <laughs> so many playthroughs that I have seen, uh, watch a little bit of, of other people playing Pillars of Eternity. People love to be godlikes, even though they're meant to be extremely rare. Just like, make your main character a godlike, make your entire party a godlike. Yeah, fuck it, hey, it's a single player game. Do what you want, do what you want to do. I say go for it, even if it is a little weird. All right, the godlike are children of the kith, civilized races, who have been blessed with physical aspects associated with the gods, though some do not consider it a blessing. Certainly our friend Palagina did not. 
These aspects may take many forms and often come with mystical powers. Aberrant head shapes are typical, and godlike are unable to wear protective headgear, as it is near impossible to find anything that fits. Because of their unusual nature and their inability to reproduce, godlike are often viewed with fear and wonder. And human, we know about that. Orlins. Little dudes, little furry guys. Orlins are the smallest of the kith races, though many cultures don't consider them to be civilized at all. Also notable for their large ears, two-toned skin, and hirsute bodies, Orlins are commonly found in Air Glanfoth, the Ishamidal Plains, and parts of the Deerwood. They are known for their mental intensity and sharp senses. Now, perception is pretty good as well. If anything, if I were to completely recreate my character, which I don't really want to, I have an attachment to my dude, come on, 200 something hours, there's an attachment. I would probably re-roll Orlin. When I was making my character in Pillars 1, I didn't know very much about like the game and the, the world and like the culture of the Orlins, but uh, they're pretty cool. They have a lot of uh, problems with getting enslaved and shit, and just generally being mistreated and, and all sorts of shit by uh, other, other races, but... Um, I, I kind of like that a lot. I don't know. Same reason why I like the, the Dunmer a whole lot in the old Elder, Elder Scrolls, all that shit. Uh, let's see. Yeah, minus one might. Plus two perception. Yeah, perception is very good if we're using guns because they're slow fire rate. You want to hit... You, you don't hit as often, so you want to hit real big and you want to make sure you hit. Uh, let's see. Perception contributes to accuracy and the reflex defense. Perception represents a character's senses as well as their instinctive ability to pick up on details such as detecting traps or hidden objects. Yeah, that's very good. Very good. I wonder if they nerfed Resolve in all the checks, because it used to be there was a lot of Resolve checks. Resolve contributes towards reducing hostile effect durations as well as improving will and deflection. Ooh, deflection was real good. It reflects a character's internal drive, determination, and fearlessness. All right, let's hit up the old elf. There we go. Let's see. Just run through them here. Get a basic uh, sense of, like, their size and all of them. All right. Yeah. Yeah, elves are shorter than humans in this, huh? All right. I think. <laughs> fuck. I think I, I mentioned something about that in the in the uh, pillars one character creation. Good lord. All right. Pale elves or wood elves? We're gonna go with wood elves, but let's see what uh, the pale elves have access to. Uh, it is unclear how long ago the pale elves, Glamfellin, came to the southern polar regions of the world but they have lived there for at least 12,000 years based on their continuous contact with Almawa traders. They are one of the most stationary ethnic groups in the known world, migrating within the polar region, but seldom venturing far north. They're rare in northern lands, and most people consider them exotic, if they have seen one at all. Oh, look at this. New racial things, I think. Elemental Endurance, the Pale Elves' long history of living in inhospitable climates has given them an inherent resistance to burn and freeze. That's not that good. I mean, how often are we going to... I mean, we might get burned a lot. It is a tropical setting. I can see that. All right. And yeah, the, the stat bonuses are the same. Let's see. Wood Elves have a natural resistance towards uh, dexterity afflictions. Now, this is definitely not the same. I remember one of the main reasons for me picking Wood Elf in the first one was... Um, you got an accuracy bonus for using a ranged weapon as a wood elf if you were a certain distance away. Huh. So we have resistance to hobbled, immobilized, and paralyzed. Oh, that's pretty good. Paralyzed is pretty shitty. These afflictions can be countered by a dexterity inspiration. Quick, nimble, or swift. Huh. Alright. Characters that are resistant to a type of affliction will downgrade any afflictions of that type applied to them by one tier. For example, a character with resistance to might afflictions would downgrade stunned to dazed. A dazed affliction would be downgraded to staggered. And a staggered affliction would fail to apply. Oh! Huh! That is new! It used to be that they were completely separate things. Oh, shit. I wonder. I bet there's also spells that upgrade the, the effects. So, like, you could just cast an AoE spell from, like, a wizard or a priest or something, and boom, all of your hobbles become immobilized. Huh. That's very interesting that there's, like, now a, a tree, so to speak, or, like, a train of, uh, how, how shit pops off. And look at this dude's fucking eyelashes. Holy shit, he's got the extensions going on. All right. 
Let's try it out. Let's, uh... Oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck! Alright, which... <laughs> single... Select single or multi-class. Oh, man, I want him to be a multi-class. You can't get as high-powered, I know that. I looked up a little bit about because, you know, shit, I'm a little enticed by the systems. That's one of my favorite things about uh, the first pillars was all of the additional system stuff. Anyway, would you like to make a single-class or a multi-class character? Single-class characters are entirely focused on their chosen class. They gain access to higher-level powers more quickly. Multi-class characters can select powers from two classes, but gain access to higher higher level powers more slowly and cannot access their class's highest level powers. Oh, and I, I should also say, I haven't done anything in this game past, uh, like, the opening splash screen and anything of that at all. I haven't looked up any, like, uh, gameplay beyond trailers and stuff. Um, nope, I take that back. I did look at um, that stream from Co Carnage where he went over a bunch of the stuff. But shit, it was, it was so tedious to just thumb through and just pause the thing every so often to read through it. I was just like, oh, fuck this. I'm, I'll just wait until the game comes out. I'm gonna go play Vermintide or something. <laughs> Alright, multi-class characters are not recommended for new players. Well, I'm a new player, and I want a multi-class. Boom. Sorry. Uh, Barbarian. Let's see. We definitely want to be a rogue. We are definitely gonna be a rogue. Now, check it out. They've got new, like, skill checks here. Bluff, streetwise, stealth, sleight of hand, mechanics... I love it when games distinguish between more than just saying speech. Yeah, this is a speech check. Because a speech check could mean so many different things. So I love it when they, they have things like, oh, you're lying to someone. Oh, you're streetwise. Oh, this is more of like an intelligence thing. You're, you're being very smart. Oh, we have a, a new comment. Twitch stream from Avery Satos. Thank you. Hello. Uh, bluff, streetwise. Yeah, we're going with this. Let's read, uh, read through this fun description here. Oh, and this is a new thing. Roll Striker. Oh, look, huh. Well, we'll look at that in a bit, but this is a new thing. Resource Guile. Every class has, like, its own sort of fun resource. Uh, closest thing I could say it's like is, uh, um, what would you call it? Fucking, um, like Diablo 3. How every class has its own sort of unique specialized resource. I don't know. Maybe it's not as as in depth as Diablo three. Not not to say that Diablo three did it super in depth. It, for a lot of them, it's just like a reskin, so to speak. But this one, I think, is even more so just a reskin. Just just called different things. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm saying a lot of bullshit, and I have no idea what I'm saying. It might be completely untrue. Uh, rogue abilities require and consume guile on use outside of combat. A rogue's guile is restored ready to be used in the next encounter. Yes, now this is a big change they made from Pillars 1 to Pillars 2, which I kind of like a lot, um, because I got around it very easily in Pillars 1 by just basically backtracking a shitload and going back to campfires and stuff. Now, almost all of the abilities are per encounter, which I know a lot of people didn't like, but I felt like it was such a good change because, like I said, I would just easily get around it by just going back to and grabbing a campfire. If anything, it just—it was just tedious to have to do it. So I feel like this was a good change. All right, uh, rogues are vicious killers, feared for the brutality of their attacks. Man, it makes me sound fucking horrific as shit. They can be found as often in dark back alleys as the heart of battlefield skirmishes. Though unpredictable and undisciplined, rogues are commonly used as shock troops or as part of a surprise assault. Their withering attacks, breaking enemy ranks and morale. Rogues tend to congregate in larger numbers in cities, where they can be steadily employed as mercenaries or hired muscle. Yo, that makes rogues sound like a Pokemon, <laughs> right? The rogue type of Pokemon is usually found in cities. Multi-class characters average their skill bonuses across both classes. Huh. Okay, that's interesting. I, I did not know that. Alright, so bluff. Uh, we're getting some bluffing, which, yo, I want to hit me up on that. All but the most honest adventurers find it useful to stretch the truth on occasion. Unscrupulous denial, feigned ignorance, gross exaggeration, and bald-faced lying are all covered by this skill. Streetwise. Streetwise covers the basic rules of survival one learns on the streets and back alleys of major cities. It includes urban readiness as well as appropriate etiquette for dealing with unsavory types. Right. Stealth allows characters of any class to attempt to avoid being seen or heard. It is used automatically whenever the character is in stealth mode. 
The higher the character's skill, the closer they can get to enemies before being detected. Sleight of hand. Whether you want to lift a few coins from an unsuspecting mark, or plant incriminating evidence, or worse, on an enemy- Oh shit! Can we reverse pickpocket bombs? Can we do some exploding pants business from, like, Fallout? Huh. Sleight of hand can get the job- <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> can get the job done without drawing suspicion. Man, we definitely want sleight of hand. Holy shit, if ever there was a skill that I needed, sleight of hand was it. Mechanics. Traps and locks can be a problem for even the toughest adventurers, draining their resources and injuring or killing those who are unfortunate enough to trigger an unseen floor plate. The mechanics skill makes it easier to open locks and disable traps. Additionally, any character can use the mechanics skill to place traps of their own. The higher the mechanics skill, the more accurate the trap. In conversations and scripted interactions, mechanics can be used to activate or disable a variety of machines. Oh, I wonder if we'll be finding some robo-dudes. Some giant robo-scorpions. Holy shit. Hmm. I wonder if they streamlined the uh, whole trap laying thing. Because in the first one, lay throwing down traps and stuff before a fight was tedious as hell. Oh my god. It was the worst, having them all set up. And you couldn't stack them all on top of each other. Oh god. What a pain in the butt. Fortunately, I only ever had to do it on like two really tough encounters. Anyway, let's look at the ability tree. Oh, look at that. Man, now this is something that Pillars 1 did not have, and oh my god, look at that, that is beautiful. Ooh, I love to open up a fresh game, smell that fresh plastic new car smell, and look at the talent tree. Oh my god, we'll just quickly go through here, just kind of looking through. Yeah, this is normally the kind of shit that I would do a cut. If I was doing like a, a video on the old YouTube land, I would just cut this. I would just be like, oh yeah, we'll just cut through this, uh, I did it in between videos. Well now this time, you get the whole hog, baby. Escape, Guile, cost some Guile, hmm, let's see, what is good for a gun-slinging, gun toting ding-dong? Get my old brace of pistols out, debilitating strike, now that looks good, look, we can even right-click for more details, oh, good! Look, the range depends on the weapon, so that's what we want, we don't want things in melee, we want things where the range is either always ranged, or uh, depends on the weapon. Hmm. And you can see you have skill evolution, a new thing. Skills evolve. They ha skills have their own trees, in fact, so to speak. Man, this is some good shit. Oh, look. Finishing blow. That was a good one that we used a lot. This one, withering strike. Yeah, a lot of these also depend on the weapon. A lot of the same old ones that depended on weapon, they still do. Shadowing beyond. Enduring shadows. Let's see. I don't think... Yeah, here we go. Um, these are locked... For only single class characters. Oh shit, up to 11. Power level 5, oh look, okay. Is unlocked at character level 9 for single class characters. Okay, but we're a multi-class character. Huh, I wonder at what level we get that. There is definitely, um... We, we either don't get these last two or these last three. Something like that if we're multi-class. Because we'll also get access to the whole other uh, rigmarole. Let's see, what do we miss out on? Coordinated positioning, no, that's that same from the first one, that's not that good. Smoke bomb, pernicious cloud, that could be good. Uh, perplexing, perpl I thought that said slap. Perplexing slap, <laughs> no. It's melee, so no dice. Gambit, ooh, range weapon. Oh, what is this? This looks cool, look at that, that's a scary looking guy. Full attack, many abilities will state that they use either a full or primary attack, right? When such abilities are used, let's see. All currently equipped weapons or with their primary equipped weapon. Right. So full attack is what we want because we're aiming to dual wield. If we have full attacks, that means we fire off both, both of our dual pistol arrows at the same time. All right. Hmm. This does seem pretty nice. Hmm. Because it, it refills your, um, your, what do you call it? Your resource. The rogue takes a calculated risk to strike the foe with a powerful blow from each weapon. For each point of guile remaining, this attack gains additional crit hit damage and chance to crit. Gambit's cost is high, but if it successfully crits, the rogue regains some of their guile. Oh, okay, I didn't even look at that other part. I'm just too excited to be playing this game. I've been looking forward to it. Let's see. This looks like a uh, melee sort of ability. Range, 8 meters. Not that great. Uh, enduring Shadows. Untargetable. Oh, so this is a defensive ability. 
And this vanishing strike. Oh, man. Oh, shit, that seems useful. Uh, well, we won't be getting that. <laughs> All right, so a lot of fun stuff here. Yeah. That we won't get access to. But hey, there's probably a lot of fun stuff at the beginning. All right. Uh, also, I'm assuming we're going to be able to respec. So in case I fuck up real badly here, <laughs> we'll, we'll still have a, an ace in the hole at the end of the day. All right, striker. Let's see, what is this? Oh. Strikers are unequaled in their ability to inflict large amounts of damage and crippling afflictions to single targets. Striker classes include cypher, druid, fighter, monk, ranger, rogue, and wizard. Let's see, what other ro roles are there? Crowd control are the barbarians. Right, because they all have AoE. Works real good with, um, what do you call it? AoE attacks um, from weapons that have, like, on proc things. Where it's like, oh, this two-handed hammer has a 20% a chance to knock down everybody that it hits. So if you're always hitting a shitload of people with your uh, melee attack, because you're a barbarian, well, holy crap, that's dope as hell. Uh, someone, someone a long time ago told me about that. I think their username was Golden State or something. A, uh, a general viewer. Let's see. Minor role defender. Yeah, off tank. Support, crowd control. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, yep, crowd control striker. Crowd control, support, striker. For druid, fighters are defenders. Yep. Monk, striker, defender. Paladin, support, defender. I wonder if paladins are as overpowered as they were in the first game. Because holy crap. It felt like I could just have a team of five paladins in uh, Pillars 1 and just destroy everything. This entire, like, legion of paladins. Priests, only good at support, resource, faith, spells. Bond, striker, defender for those dudes. Rogues, yep. Wizards, crowd control, and striker. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Oh shit, metaphysics. Man, there's a lot of these new things. I'm very much into that. Huh. Oh shit, explosives. Ooh. Hold up. Because fighter is going to be our other class. Ooh, look, they also get explosives. Oh. All right, well, let's go with... We're a rogue first and a fighter second. There we go. Oh, shit. Subclass. Oh, I forgot about this. Huh. Um, obviously, this won't be for a while, but any chance of a first impressions video in PoE 2? Uh, yeah, there probably will be one. Well, I don't know. First impressions? I don't know. I, I've, I haven't really ever done anything like that. I usually just do, like, a final thoughts thing, which I'll definitely do. Uh, I don't know. First impressions? I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, no, no subclass? Let's see. Now, we definitely want a subclass. I love, like, further defining your character and all that. It sort of reminds me of the uh, traits at the beginning of New Vegas. I was like, yeah, see, some of these you get a bonus and a penalty, all that stuff. Yeah, I looked into this. Assassins trained to strike opponents who are completely unaware of their presence, often killing a hapless victim in a single blow. However, assassins are even more fragile than other rogues making them vulnerable in toe-to-toe -to -toe fights. Uh, gain the Assassinate passive, which grants stealth attacks, which grants stealth attack bonuses, uh, penetration accuracy, and crit hit damage. All damage received is increased. Which seems pretty good. I don't know, if we don't hardly get hit, because I feel like on Path of the Damned, if we get hit, we're going to take a crap load of damage anyway and almost immediately get knocked out. So what's 10% more damage when you're taking, like, a fourth of your health bar in one hit. Because you, you're going to rely on your tanks to be picking up the slack, right? I feel like that's a good one. Hmm. I mean, I don't really like the idea of being an assassin. But uh, but still, the, the bonus is here. Passive, which grants stealth attacks, bonus, uh, penetration, accuracy, and crit hit damage. Let's see, can we actually check out what exactly constitutes a stealth attack? Let's see. Is it sneak attack is what they mean? Because in the first one, there were a lot of... Yeah, there's a lot of qualifiers for a sneak attack. Plus 30% damage with weapons against targets afflicted, affected by flanked body afflictions, which can be a shitload of things. Anything that affects my constitution, dexterity. Okay. And mind affliction. So just any affliction, I guess. Right? That's all the stats. Yeah. Uses the rogue's ability to approach unseen, adding additional bonus damage to their weapon attacks when the target is flanked or affected by any affliction. Hmm. Alright. Well, let's take a look at these other ones. Street Fighter sounds pretty dope. Alright, get a little Chun-Li action going on, huh? Street Fighters excel when the odds are against them, becoming especially deadly when they are outnumbered and bloodied. Bloodied. 
A character that is between 50% health and 25% health is considered bloodied. Oh, shit. Well, we probably won't be able to take this, because... <laughs> if we're at that health on Path of the Damned, well, we're a little fucked. Maybe if we were a tank, this would be good. But as, like, someone who <laughs> who's just DPS, who isn't armor armed to the teeth with the, like, plate armor or whatever the hell, or has a, a good shield or something, we're pretty fucked if we're at that point. We aren't going to be able to make much use of this. Sneak attack becomes more deadly. Oh, there is a, um, hmm. Is there a distinction here? Are stealth attacks one made from stealth? Maybe. It may be. Yeah, there may be. They may not actually have made a mistake here. Stealth attacks may be completely different from sneak attacks. Okay. Hmm. So we may not want that. How about Trickster? Trickster is fun. I'd consider myself a bit of a trickster if I do say so myself. <laughs> oh, gosh. Good God. Tricksters dabble in illusion magic to augment their rogue abilities. Using magic, tricksters can find their way out of almost any situation. But their sneak attack is less powerful than other rogues. Oh, shit. So we lose out on that. But we get Archimere's Dazzling Lights. Gains access to select illusion wizard spells at power levels 3, 5, 7, and 9. Spell cost, guile to use. Sneak attack deals significantly less damage. Oh, I wish it gave us numbers for exactly how much less. Because sneak attack currently is only a 30% bonus. I mean, how much lower could it be? 10%? I could see that being a reality. All right, let's see. Power level is a measure of the overall power of your character. All active spells and abilities are modified by power level and become more powerful as you gain levels. Some items, spells, and abilities may also influence your power level positively or negatively. Okay. Let's see. Can it, will it show us um, these illusion spells here? No. Break the bell. Strike the bell. Sounds a little kinky. <laughs> yeah, ring the bell. <laughs> what the hell? Alright. Huh. Is there a way we can check what these wizard spells are? These illusion wizard spells? Hmm. Let's go back and check out wizard here real quick. Let's see. Next... Illusionist. Here we go. Illusionist master spells that disguise and conceal, but are unable to cast conjuration or enchanting spells. I mean, who gives a shit? If, if we're taking the trickster thing. Gain increased power level with illusion spells. Gain reflexive mirror. So we don't have that. We won't be gaining any of that. Let's see. Let's just look at the... Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> well, here we go. Let's see. Oh, can we just, like, do a control F? No? Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Let's look for just illusion stuff. Here we go. Archimere's... Okay, let's... Hold up. Let's go back here real quick. Good lord. Back to Rogue. Next. Trickster. 3, 5, 7, and 9. Let me whip out the old handy-dandy notebook here. Write this sucker down. Oop. There we go. 3, 5, 7... Nine. Dope. Alright. Now let's check out Wizards. Illusion. There we go. Oh, whoops, 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 whoops. No, I don't want to be a wizard. Not today. Let's see. Three. Okay. Transmutation Illusions. Uh, causes the caster, caster to be visually displaced. Oh, that's, that's a pretty good defensive one. Okay. Let's see. Illusions as well here. Foe AoE. Sick and terrified. Okay. Terrified is... Ooh, minus three all power levels. And minus five resolve. Huh. Which is gonna make them easier to hit. Only four seconds, though. Let's see, any other illusion stuff? Oh, shit. Console hot spell. Yo, we fucking killed that guy. We killed that fucking man. Damn. All right, enchanting. Hmm. I mean, this would be like a good oh shit kind of uh, ability. 45 seconds of, uh, of extra deflection, reflex, and half of incoming hits converted to grazes. That would be really good if we got like in a real tough situation. Noise loud. Ooh, that's, that's a new thing. Are there like spells that you can cast secretively? Loud. Loud. I don't know why I clicked on the one with lightning on it. <laughs> Thinking that would be, that would be some sort of a uh, quiet one. All right, let's see. Five is the other ones. Let's see. Illusions. Here we go. Oh, shit. Look, a major debuff. Huh. Drains resolve intellect and perception. 
and creates two lesser versions of the effect that jump to nearby enemies. Okay. Huh. Let's see. What else do we have that's illusion? Uh, Ringgrim's enervating terror. Weakened and terrified for 20 seconds. Okay. And weakened, uh, minus five constitution. All incoming healing is reduced by half. That's new. And that is strong. Oh, man. If we fight characters that can heal up, that seems really good. That's like our mortal strike there. All right. Let's see. Any other illusion stuff? Nope. Okay. And seven here. Let's see. Are there not any illusions here at seven? Huh. Yeah, it said that we could get some at seven. Or maybe we can just pick up any of them at seven? Yeah, it must that must be it. We can just pick up any of them at seven. Okay. Let's see. Oh, the paralyze. Oh, that is so good. Oh shit, we would get access to petrif petrification. Which was so fucking good in the first one. Man, I didn't realize petrifying someone was considered an illusion. Alright. And nine. Which we may not actually get access to. Yeah, we may not get access to that last one. Let let's just check real quick what Trickster does again. Is it you just get to pick one at that level? Yeah. Okay. To select illusion wizard spells at power levels 3, 5, 7, and 9. Huh. I'm tempted to take that. That could be real useful. Then again, we could double down on our... Uh, it's between Assassin and Trickster. Hmm. I feel like Trickster would not be good. Because we'll have long recovery time using pistols and all that shit. Then again, we could fire off one set of pistols, swap, and then be able to use our, uh, our shit again real quick. Or maybe the system works completely differently. Whereas this doubles down on our uh, capabilities with our alpha strikes, right? Hmm. Ooh, it's tempting to just have a really strong alpha strike. Oh, shit. And we are going to be ranged. We are going to be a ranged rogue. I think assassin makes a lot of sense. I'm going with assassin. All right. Abilities, we get to pick an ability here. Well, crippling strike for sure, just like the old first one. Oh, look! Crippling Strike is actually a quiet uh, ability. Huh. If I use this with a pistol, do I just, um... Hmm. How does that work? Let's see. Noise level is useful in luring enemies into a choke point or trap. At least I believe so in an update they did. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Thank you very much, uh, SF Walling. Thank you. All right, let's see. Penetration to... Which is very good. Interrupts on hit. Yeah, I think it's got to be Crippling Strike for sure. There we go. All right, second class. And now, of course, I looked up when they, when they first announced, oh, there's going to be multi-classes in this shit. I was like, ooh, let's look at all the fun names for all the multi-classes. And what do we have here? But Swashbuckler, baby. Yes, 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 yes. All right, major role, defender. Yep, and striker, minor role. Uh-huh. And let's see. Fighters form the front line of disciplined armies across the Eastern Reach. Though they are most commonly found in cultures with an organized martial structure, fighters can also be encountered as wandering mercenaries, bodyguards, and other types of sellswords. Hmm, sounds, sounds like something I'd be into. The common element that unifies fighters is their heavy focus on endurance and melee defense. All right, and they get plus one survival. Oh, look, it doesn't want to tell me about survival. Uh, it's a secret. All right. Uh, intimidate, streetwise, athletics, and explosives. Oh, yeah, and this is a new thing they added. I remembered in one of the, like, slacker backer or backer updates. By the way, I am a slacker backer. I backed this in the old thing. Is that is that full disclosure? Do I have to do that? Anyway, explosives. Explosives uh, improves the accuracy and damage effectiveness of bombs, noisemakers, and similar devices. Oh, noisemakers. Huh. All right, there you go. Well, that, this is exactly what we're going to go with. Let's look at the ability tree here. Well, it looks exactly the <laughs> Okay, so is this a... Uh... Alright, so this is a... Oh, look, okay, we can pick up here at the top. So it must go in alphabetical order, which is why, why uh, Fighter is, at, is first here. Okay, that's good. Let's see, melee, combat, makes you aware. What is aware? Plus five perception. Whoa, that's good! Oh, man, that will be so good! 
Oh man, could you imagine an Alpha Strike will just always have Discipline Barrage active. Plus 5 Perception and Concentration can be gained through Spells, Abilities, Talents. Okay, yeah, what's it do though? Each point of concentration that a character possesses uh, prevents interrupts. Okay, yeah, that was in the first game. Alright, let's see. How did, how did these upgrade? Intuitive. Oh, shit! 25% hits to crits! Oh my god, that is so good! Oh, that is gonna be good. Concentration, aware, and acute. Plus five int. Oh, shit. Mmm, someone could make some kind of wizard fighter. Look at that, multi- multi-classing. Ooh, multi-classing is fun. All right, melee. Look at all this fighter stances. Oh, look, huh. I wonder if this, uh, if cleaving stance would apply to ranged weapons. Surely not, right? That just makes sense to me. The fighter trains in the ability to adopt specialized fighting stances. Each stance excels at handling a different aspect of combat. Defender stance is apt for holding fast against groups of enemies. Cleaving stance is effective when attacking several enemies at once, while warrior stance is best for standing toe-to-toe -to -toe against a single enemy. Dope. All right, into the fray. Yeah, that ability sucked in Pillars 1. Man, I had Edder try that out for a bit. Man, it sucked. Penetrating strike. Wow, that is great. Holy shit, plus four penetration? Oh man, I wonder if penetration is as good in this game as it was in the first one. Holy wackadoo. Oh, and we get the constant recovery? Actually, we will not be getting the constant recovery thanks to a side class. I did look at the subclasses and stuff. That's stuff that I looked at. And Black Jacket happens to be the one that we're going to be rolling with, baby. Fighters of the Black Jacket Academies pride themselves on being skilled with a wide variety of weapons. Though the original school was founded in the Deerwood. Oh! Many sister academies have sprung up across the Eastern Reach and Old Empires. Former students of the Black Jacket often wear Black Brigadine as a sign of fellowship. Well, we're not going to do that, are we? We're going to look like some kind of cool pirate. All right. A colonial nation founded by settlers of the Edir Empire. Following a series of conflicts with Edir, the territory became independent in 2672 AI and is now ruled by a duke who is elected by several, seven earls that oversee its earldoms. Oh, I guess they replaced the duke who got assassinated. That makes sense. It must have been at least a few years uh, between each game. All right. Man, <laughs> and calling it a colonial nation is putting a light. Holy shit, when we did that uh, video of uh, Pillars 1 where we just read through a shitload of books, oh my god. They had a lot of problems in the Deerwood and still do. Oh, that's that's good stuff, though. I love that. All right. Start with an additional weapon set and weapon proficiency. Reduced recovery time penalty when switching weapons. That seems real good. That's what we're going to get, right? Because we're going to have multiple braces of pistols and we're just going to swap between them. Oh, that's going to be so, so fucking good. All right. Devoted. What is this? Let's just look through them real quick, just in case we want to make a last minute uh, decision. Uh, the devoted are dedicated to the pursuit of a single weapon, to the exclusion of uh, to the exclusion of all others. They are so attuned to the techniques of their chosen arms that other weapons feel bizarre and alien to them. Because of their extreme specialization, devoted academies often consist of a single master or a tiny cadre of like-minded disciples. Bonus may select a single weapon proficiency as their chosen weapon, increase penetration with their chosen weapon, increase crit hit damage with their chosen weapon. Wow! Too bad it doesn't tell us the numbers here. You think it would, because so so far in so many of the different areas it gives you so much information. Like it's just an overload of it, and honestly, I love the overload. But uh penalty. Accuracy is penalized whenever using a weapon that is not their chosen weapon. Which would be good for us, because I only really intend on using pistols. I intend on being very stubborn in that way. Penetration and increased crit damage would be very nice. But at the same time... Yo, this is going to be so good because I really want to continue that sort of playstyle where we just swap out weapons left and right. And that's exactly what I want. Alright, recovery... Let, let's uh, read up here on recovery time because that'll be very uh, specific to our character. Recovery is the amount of time that a character spends between actions. Most actions will cause a character to enter a brief recovery afterwards though some may have shorter or even no recovery time. Right, and with guns, we will have, uh, with firearms, we will have the longest recovery time in the entire fucking game, because we gotta reload, and they're like old-ass, old-fashioned guns where 
you know, you gotta do the whole, like, pipe thing. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I don't know anything about that shit. Alright, armor has a large effect on recovery. Generally, heavier armor inflicts longer recovery penalties. Right, and unbroken, what is that? Oh, right, yeah, this is the tanky one. Unbroken fighters are glaciers of the battlefield, slow-moving, almost indestructible, and dangerous to circumvent. Often underestimated for their lack of mobility, the Unbroken have laid low countless foolhardy opponents on the battlefield. Unbroken academies um, tend to be somber, serious places, most common in similarly somber, serious nations, such as Edair and Raid Saris. Oh, how's Raid Saris doing? Let's get an update on them. Uh, Deerwood's neighbor to the north, Raid Saris is a nation firmly rooted in its Aethasian faith, right? A fervor that took hold during the events of the Saints' War, and remains even after the apparent death of Aethys. Oh, fuck, yeah. They're going to have a shitload of things to say in this, uh, in this whole game, because, holy shit, <laughs> Aethys is back, baby, and he ain't happy. Again, he's not happy again. Seems like kind of a dick, huh? All right, plus one engagement, important for tanks. Uh, I wonder if engagement works differently. Yeah, let's read up on engagement. This will be really important when we have our tank uh, operation up and running. Engagement can be acquired from spells, abilities, talents, or by wearing a shield. Engagement occurs any time a character attacks an enemy with a melee weapon at close range. As soon as the attacker gets close enough, he or she will engage. Engage. When a character is first engaged, he or she will stop moving. The character is free to move around their engager, but moving away will provoke a disengagement attack. If characters break engagement, there is a limited amount of time before that enemy may re-engage them. Ah, okay. Seems about the same as uh, the first game, except I don't think in Pillars 1 you could actually move around your, uh, your engaged target. I don't think so. All right. Increased penetration uh, on disengagement attacks gains shield mastery, providing armor, uh, providing bonus armor rating while wearing a shield. Oh shit, shield mastery was just like a, t a passive talent that you could take. All right, lower stride in combat. What is stride? Stride represents how quickly a character can run in combat, with higher scores covering more ground. Oh, so move speed. Okay, lower reflexes. Let's see. Oh yeah, whoops, I'm dumb as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. We're going with Black Jacket. Devoted, very good as well, but Black Jacket sounds fun. Sounds real fun. I want to swap weapons left and right. There we go. Look at this. Oh, we're definitely getting the Discipline Barrage. Ooh, the fighter intensely focuses on their training, gaining the aware inspiration for a short time. Oh, that is very, very good. Especially early on when our stats are garbage. 50% grace to hit is going to be aces. All right. Ooh, here we go. Let's see. What do we want? Let's see. I'm surprised it doesn't uh, bring back all of our old stats, though I suppose the the old save game really only saves, like, world states and not uh, a shitload of minutia. I don't know. Who the hell knows? Oh, look. Recommended for Swashbuckler. Huh. It knows what we would want in our multi-class. Wow. How long did it take him to do that? All right. Let's see. Well, we definitely want Perception. And maybe dexterity. Maybe. Then again, if we're doing weapon swapping a whole lot, I wonder how many... If there's uh, roughly the same amount of weapons uh, that you can wield at once. I don't know. Let's see. Well, we know for sure we want perception, right? Anyway, let's just read through these real quick. And we can see the fun little, uh, like, Fallout New Vegas uh, uh, ratings that they give it. Might contributes to damage, healing effectiveness, and the fortitude defense. It represents a character's physical and spiritual strength. I, I like that, that it also includes spiritual strength, because it does affect casters, right? Um, brute force, as well as their ability to channel powerful magic, right? Uh, you can be weak, average, strong, or fantastically powerful. We know about that. All right. And this constitution affects health and the fortitude defense. It represents a combination of the character's overall health and stamina. And fortitude should be uh, the same, right? Fortitude resists attacks on the internal physical systems of the character. Poison, disease, etc. It is defined by the character's class, level, might, and constitution. It can also be influenced by other effects. Alright. Oh, look. Health actually has a lot of extra stuff. Health represents a character's short-term survivability. Damage that is not reduced by a character's armor rating goes straight to their health. 
potions and healing magic, such as from a paladin, priest, or druid, can restore health in combat. When a character's health reaches zero, he or she will be knocked out. A knocked out character can be brought back in combat through the use of the, a revive ability. Otherwise, characters will regain all of their health at the end of combat, assuming they're on the winning side. Right. All stuff that we knew about. Good shit. All right. So, let us look at dexterity here. Dexterity affects the character's action speed with all attacks, spells, and abilities, and contributes to the reflex defense. It represents a combination of, oh yeah, we read this before, clumsy, average, agile, incredibly graceful, frail, average, healthy, indestructible. I'm fucking indestructible. Perception uh, contributes to accuracy and the reflex defense. Perception represents a character's senses as well as their instinctive ability to pick up on details, such as detecting tre Yeah, we read that one before. Oblivious, average, observant, eagle-eyed. Yeah, very recommended. Definitely one we need to max out because it is... It sucks a big butt if you miss a shot with a gun. Because holy crap, you do not get many. All right. Intellect. Contributes to the will defense and influences durations and areas of effect for all abilities. It represents a character's logic, reasoning, and deduction capabilities. Dim, average, quick-witted, brilliant. Oh, what were these? Yeah, we read those. All right. Uh, resolve contributes towards reducing hostile effects, uh, hostile effect durations, as well as improving will and deflection defenses. It reflects a character's internal drive, determination, and fearlessness. Timid, average, strong-willed, fearless. All right. And I, I don't mind playing someone who's a little bit of a coward. So I'm actually fine with taking away like a point or two here. Look at this. <laughs> we lose deflection. Hostile effects are a little bit longer on us. We're not a super coward, but uh, we're a little we're a little scared. We get a little scared. How low can we go? Oh shit! You can go below timid. Okay. Hmm. How low am I willing to go? I don't know. Let's see. Let's bring up um, perception way up high. There we go. I'm. Oh yeah. Look, we can't even get to twenty yet. I'm tempted to just max it out. All right. And dexterity. Action speed is very important. Weirdly, it's not highlighted for us. That's very strange. Huh. I wonder if that's because it thinks as a swashbuckler I will uh, dual-wield swords. Even though there's a lot of good things in there that are good for uh, dual-wielding pistols. I don't know. So, let's put in... Uh, let's get Might up to 14 at least and put the rest in decks, maybe? That seems smart. We can also take two points out of Constitution, because we're not going to get hit very much, hopefully. Worst case scenario, we respec. Let's see, area of effect, ability duration. That could be useful, because we might want to apply some debuffs and stuff. So we won't lower that too much. Let's bring uh, Dex up a little bit. Hmm. Let's see. Should we nerf our resolve one more? Let's do it. Let's get, let's get crazy. Uh, let's see. Do it again, maybe? <laughs> Our first, uh, in Pillars 1, we had very low resolve. We had very, very low resolve. Actually, you know what? Let's bring it back up to 7. If anything, let's lower our constitution. Right? Oh, shit. I don't know. We're getting dangerous here. We're getting dangerous as hell. Maybe we keep it like that. Yeah, maybe we keep it like this. Okay. What do we want? Do we want higher constitution or higher resolve? Hmm. Do I want to be able to take a beating, or... <laughs> I mean, both of these are taking a beating. Do I want to be able to physically withstand the beating, or be able to be like, GIVE ME SOME MORE! <laughs> hmm. Let's see. Let's go with GIVE ME SOME MORE, because that's that's more fun. I'm, I'm talking about, like, in uh, speech checks and all that stuff. Or skill checks during dialogue, I should say. Alright, let's go with that. 14, 7, 19, 19, 10, 8. Eh. Alright. Worst case scenario, we respect later. I'm pretty sure we'll be we'll be able to, right? Why not? Oh, you would drop constitution. Okay. You know what? Hey, we'll do it. We'll bring it down at least one more. And bring up Mike to a nice round 15 for strong. There we go. A little advice there from uh, SF Walling in the chat. Alright, there we go. Yeah, worst case scenario, we respec. If I remember correctly, we can change these uh, on our main character for companions and stuff. We cannot, unless they're um, all that stuff, right? Um, because as you said, roleplay called for resolve, right? Yeah. Alrighty. 
Let's do this. This looks good. We're doing it. All right, where are you from? Well, holy crap, we gotta go with what we picked in the first one. Oh my gosh, we really lucked out and somehow managed to pick the next expansion. <laughs> or the next game, even. All right, maybe we should read through all these again and see if they have any new updates to um, how all this stuff... Um, hmm. How all of it may have changed over time and all that? I don't know. Maybe we should. Yeah, let's just read through them all real quick. The Adair Empire is one of the most prominent old empires of the West. It is centered around the equator and has a tropical climate. The nation of Adair is at its heart and houses the majority of human and elven populace. Adair was once a powerful colonial force, but the loss of Raid Saris and the Deerwood reduced its stature. Adirans are common in the Eastern Reach, but rare in the Deadfire Archipelago. Huh. Where is the Deadfire Archipelago, then? Is it not around the equator? Maybe not. All right, Deadfire Archipelago uh, marks the eastern edge of the known world, dominantly populated by island Almawa, who make up the tribes of Huana. Oh, shit. Maybe this is something that'll be in this game. I think so. I think I remember seeing something about this in one of their videos. I can't remember. It's been a while since I watched those. A tribal civilization primarily comprised of Island Almawa, which has thrived in the Deadfire Archipelago for thousands of years. Though largely decentralized, the Huana share common values steeped in mythology and a sense of guardianship over the isles they call home. Is that what Kana was from? Was Kana a Huana dude? I can't remember. I thought he was from, like, the capital Rawatai. I can't remember. He kind of might be in this game. Old fucking, uh, Kana Rua. He might be in this, because I know for a fact his sister is a companion. She's, like, on the cover and all that stuff. Uh, the chain of hundreds of islands spans through thousands of miles. The Dead Fire contains myriad climates and biomes that are home to a bewildering, a bewildering array of creatures. The last century has brought ambitious colonial traders, explorers, and pirates to the Dead Fire. But travel east of the archipelago is blocked by the destructive storms of Andra's Mortar. Oh shit, what is that? Huh. Goddess of oceans, forgotten things, lost, relentlessness, and mourning. We know all that. Said to have once fallen in love with the moon, and to have tried to draw it near. Yes, very, very true. With catastrophic consequences. Yes, yes she did. People bring tokens to her temples of things they wish to forget. And her clergy sees the tokens cast into the sea, right? And they covered that a lot and very well, I think, in um, the White March. Very, I thought that was very cool how in depth they went on Andra. Very good stuff. Uh, legends among the Huana speak of an ancient cataclysm that devastated their people thousands of years ago. Oh shit! Is it stuff that we learned about in the White March, or something separate? Huh? Details of this event have been lost to time. But Juana storytellers claim that it destroyed everything they had built, sinking even the greatest of their cities beneath the waves. Oh shit, remember there was a big ass, um, what do you call it, a big old mural uh, in the White March Part 2 inside that monk temple? Where it showed like, oh, this, this city is getting swept away by the water, Andre did it. Oh, the forgotten lost city. Oh man, dude, I bet that's totally gonna be someplace we go or find out about. All right, Ishamital Plains. This is where Zawa is from, right? If I remember correctly, our old Pillars 1 companion, Zawa the Monk. Located north of Raid Saris in the Eastern Reach, the Ishamital Plains are a large expanse of fertile savannas that are extensively farmed by its savanna folk and Orland residents. The Ishamital culture is one of the oldest in the world, though one of the least imperialistic. Huh having spread out little over the past several thousand years. Ishamital society places a strong emphasis on learning and scholarship and honors their philosophers and literati. Wow, it sounds like they're going to get conquered for sure. <laughs> they saw too many positives there on that list. Something bad is going to happen. <laughs> All right, Old Valia. Once the crown jewel of the southern seas, Old Valia is now the crumbled remnants of an empire of warring merchant nations. Right, and uh, our old friend Palagina uh, is uh, associated with Old Valia. Counting many humans and dwarves among the ranks, the Old Valian countries are still forces to be reckoned with. 
and are proud of their rich cultural heritage. The southernmost of the old empires, Old Valia, suffered a similar fate to their northern neighbors, the Adherents. In losing their most prosperous colonial uh, territories, the Valian Republics, the Valian Republics. Many Old Valians in the Deadfire Archipelago are associated with the Principi Sen Petrena, a vast coalition of pirates. Oh, shit! Huh! Let's look at this. The Principi Sen Sen Petrena. Responding to the collapse of Grand Valia, uh, 2720 to 2760 AI, noble families packed up their households and sailed abroad, seeking opportunities away from the shadow of their homeland. Over time, their old world traditions evolved into a new identity as the Principi Sen Petrena. I'm probably not doing that correctly. Uh, the princess, the princes without a homeland a loosely connected and regulated organization. Let's see. Any chances if the rumor of Fallout 3 Anniversary Edition is true? Uh, uh, that will be your playthrough after Fallout New Vegas? Uh, probably. I might take a break after New Vegas. I don't know. That way I can work on, like, guide videos and that shit. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll take it as we, as we go. But, uh, definitely Fallout 3 will, will very likely be the next Fallout game I play after New Vegas. Very likely. I have no idea. I haven't heard anything about Fallout 3 Anniversary Edition. I haven't heard anything about that. I don't know. Unless that's like a rumor that came out just recently. Like within today or the past week. Because I haven't uh, looked at much uh, game news recently. But either way, hey, timing would be pretty good. Especially for them to announce that they're big Bethesda thing. If they're not having a big proper uh, Bethesda Softworks game. And they did get that extra... Um, team at Bethesda, right? Either way, Rage 2 looks fun. <laughs> Rage 2 looks fun. <laughs> I haven't played Rage 1, but I own it on uh, PlayStation 3. Wouldn't be able to, to record or stream anything like that. I don't have any sort of like capture card. I don't know how to fucking do that. All right, Rawatai. The powerful naval kingdom of Rawatai is dominated by coastal Almawa and ruled by a Ranga Nui. Right, we know about that. Uh, the title of the ruler of the Rautaian Empire, derived from Ranga, the Huana term for a chieftain. Okay, currently the most prosperous of the old empires, Rautai has expanded aggressively into the Deadfire Archipelago to secure natural resources that are scarce in their native storm-torn land. Though folk, dwarves, and orlins can be found in Rautai, most are merchants or remnants of the old kingdoms. Rautai conquered when they seized power centuries ago. Legends say that the Rawatayans came to their lands from the Deadfire Archipelago in the wake of a terrible cataclysm. But the details of that event have been lost to time and the imagination of storytellers. Ah, and that's what we just heard about. Let's see. Just last week, Nintendo E3 layout leaked showed anniversary for Switch. Oh, shit. Huh. Well, that sounds... Yeah, that sounds like it might be real as hell. Huh. Huh. Yeah, I could see that. Definitely, yeah, bring it to the Switch. That makes sense. Oh, I wonder if they would bring Fallout 4 to the Switch, or if they even could. Because already Fallout 4 had trouble running on uh, modern consoles, too. I remember that was a big problem. Yeah. Yeah, Rage 2 looks like it's going to be more a route of Borderlands. Honestly, I'm surprised they're even doing a sequel. Yeah, me too. I didn't think the first one was received that well. But, uh, hey, sure, more... More is better, right? <laughs> hey, if it turns out to be good, that's great. All right. The Living Lands. The Living Lands is the mountainous region of a large northern island renowned for its diversity of plant and animal life. Its weather is unpredictable, and its ecosystems vary dramatically from valley to valley. The Living Lands are home to an assortment of races and a variety of colonial and independent settlements. Okay. And the White That Wends. A large, cracked southern expanse of polar ice, the White That Wends, is home to pale elves and small colonies of daring explorers, outcasts, and adventurers. While virtually no plant life grows in the White, it is home to many hardy species of dangerous animals that forage from the sea or prey upon each other to survive. I wonder how big it is. It sounds like it's humongous. Sort of like our own, um, our own uh, expanse of uh, Arctic, huh? Hmm, that's where Sagani was from, right? Sagani was from uh, an area of that. Alright. Well, we are from Deadfire, which gives us one dexterity. Which, hey, that's good for us. 
All right. What was your job? Oh, shit. What was I? Oh, I was a drifter, right? Yeah. You never quite fit in no matter where you go. Each new town is just a place to rest briefly before moving on to the next. You're more comfortable on the road, traveling the world. Yeah, that was my job, but hey, the events of Pillars of Eternity 1, my drifting ways were behind me. Right? Because we settled down at uh, in the Deerwood at, at Cadnua. Alright, here we go. But hey, guess what? I thought I was out. Then they pulled me back in. Holy shit, we're back to our drifting ways. We're going to have a sweet ship drifting around in that. Oh, man, get the Vin Diesel action going on. Gives us sleight of hand, bluffs, and streetwise. All good shit that sounds very fun. Let's see, what do these other ones give? Aristocrat gives diplomacy, bluff, and intimidate. Oh, I like diplomacy. As, uh, once again, more uh, nuance to a general speech check. Religion! Oh, shit! Oh, man. That seems like it would be very important in Pillars of Eternity. Survival, diplomacy, history. Ooh, history is cool, too. Wow, I almost want to get some points of in history just because, well, uh, shit, I read up some books in the game. I feel like I should have at least a little bit. Let's see. Alchemy. Oh, shit, I'm a sucker for alchemy. But also, explosives seems fun. <laughs> alchemy deals with the natural uh, and supernatural properties of plants. Yeah, this was, you could just do alchemy. You didn't, there wasn't a skill associated with it. Labor gives you athletics. Uh, athletics, intimidate. Streetwise for mercenary. Merchant. Bluff, diplomacy, and streetwise. Raider. Stealth, athletics, streetwise, slave, survival, athletics, and streetwise. All right. Well, we're a drifter. There we go. Weapon types. Oh, Shazbot. Look at this. We can pick a lot. Hmm. Well, we definitely want a pistol. Oh, look at all this. Is there a scroll? No, there is not. Oh, man. Rapiers. I'm a big fan of rapiers. Uh, sabers are good as well. I like those. Hmm. We should probably stick to ranged weapons, though, I'm thinking. Hmm. Are there any new or removed weapon types? It looks like they're all here. Yeah, it looks like they're all the same. All back again. Which is pretty impressive, because, hey, there was a shitload of them. Oh, interesting that they distinguish each uh, type of shield. I guess that makes sense. Hmm. Binding block. Oh, is there, like, more specialization with using a small shield? Huh. Alright, let's just quickly look at the, uh, weapons here. Pistol. Oh, do we actually start out with a pistol now? Huh, that'd be fun. Uh, damage, yeah, penetration. Range is 8 meters. Oh, so that one 8 meter ability wouldn't have been too bad. Alright. Accuracy versus deflection. Attack time, reload time. <sighs> hmm, let's see here. Excuse me. Good lord. I don't know if that came through. Let's see. Hmm. Blunted criticals, minus 25% crit damage. Oh. Huh. Oh, this is just the weapon. Okay, this is just the weapon. Alright, we just get this, I guess. I see. Pistols are small firearms. They are not uh, as powerful as arc buses, but they can be reloaded much more quickly. As with all firearms, pistols have the ability to harm enemies protected by the veil, including spirits and wizards' arcane veils. Right. Alright, let's see here. How about these? Oh, so this just gives us a look at the actual weapons and stuff. I see. Proficiency in a weapon or shield grants access to a modal ability for use with the associated item type. These abilities are situational and may be turned on or off to meet the tactical needs of a battle. There is no penalty for using a weapon without the corresponding proficiency. A character who is not proficient in a weapon only loses access to the associated modal ability. Okay, so there might be a modal ability that we want access to. Hmm, but maybe we can only have one on at a time, which seems very likely. But there might be a case where, like, we want to open with one modal ability and then continue combat with another one, right? Or depending on, like, what kind of pull, if it's, like, an AoE pull or something like that. Let's see. A character who is not proficient... Yep. Powder burns. Overloading shots with powder causes a short-range incendiary. But the thick smoke from the blunderbuss... Oh, what? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I was like, yo, what? The blunderbuss? What are you talking about? Rapid shot. The character fires and reloads the pistol quickly at the cost of accuracy. Huh. Oh, that's fun. That's a fun one. 
Huh. I wonder how fast that is. Hmm. Okay, overloading shots with power with powder causes uh, short range incendiary, distracting to the wielder, so you get like less accuracy. I'm guessing. Let's see, arc bus wielder uh, takes time to line up a well aimed shot. A well aimed shot. These attacks are far more accurate. Maybe we should specialize in arc buses too. Let's see, what else is there? Small shield. Use your small shield to better intercept melee weapon attacks and counter at the cost of recovery time. When missed by melee weapons, gain an increased accuracy on your next weapon attack. Oh, so like a more offensive tank. Use your shield to attempt to block incoming weapon attacks, completely resisting the attack, if successful, at the cost of recovery time. Let's see, taking careful position behind the large shield significantly reduces incoming ranged weapon damage, as well as damage from your attacks that target reflex. While active, you are unable to move. Okay, let's see. Should we go through all of these? Probably not. Let's at least look at the ranged ones. Uh, careful aim, cause maximum impact. Hits knock knock the target prone. Wow. All right, crossbow. Careful aim, hits interrupt. Rapid draw and fire of arrows. Penetrate the toughest armor. Huh. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't think that these modals can be used with uh, weapons beside this. Right? This makes sense. Alright. Let's get out of this shit. Let's see, what else do we want? Maybe we want a rapier? Carefully strike with your rapier, aiming for vital points to ensure success. Fighting this way increases accuracy at the cost of recovery. Eh, may as well. Or let's see, let's look at Saber real quick. By swinging the Saber with great arcing strikes, gain penetration at the cost of recovery time. Let's see. Hmm. And let's go with the rapier. Rapiers are fun. Alright, that's that's it. Huh. This does make me wonder if the whole, like, swapping pistols build is even necessary anymore. Because of this uh, modal ability. I don't know. I mean, I guess they're probably both two different kinds of builds. Two different ways you can go about it. Makes sense. Worst case scenario, we just respec. We're learning stuff. Oh shit, here we go. Man, look at all the heads popping in. Ugh, popping heads, I see. Alright. Let's change this shit around. Alright, man, our dude was getting a little framey there as all the fucking heads were loading in. Man, there are a lot of them. Alright, where was our old guy? That is not him at all. Oh, there he is! Aw, uh, there we go! Oh, whoa, does my dude update? No, okay, he just looked down and freaked me the hell out. <laughs> okay, let's see. What else do we have? Do we have any, like, new ones? I think these are all returning ones. Right? These all look very familiar. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like these are all old ones. There may be some new ones in here. I just am totally dumb as hell. Alright. Sure, we're going with this. Maybe we'll get a nice fluffy uh, jacket like that, too. Colors. Oh, like my outfit. What does this do? Is this, like, check me out? Yeah. Okay. Fun. Let's see. Ah, uh, all right. Let's see. Can we get like a nice crimson sort of color going on? Huh. Let's see. Secondary. Does that control? Okay. Pants. Skin tone. Let's see. Huh. Yeah, we'll go with that, maybe. I don't know. Let's see. The sunburned one is, is a little fun, because, you know, we're a pirate, sort of out there. Now let's go with that. Hair. Uh, let's go with black. Just some black-ass hair. Let's see, should we have some sort of, like, uh, weird, like, highlights or something? Here, let's zoom in. Oh, look at that. I wonder how many people created just, like, fucking straight-up Geralt of Rivia. <laughs> you know there's got to be a lot of them. There's got to be a lot of them. Let's see. I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to just go full-on black-ass hair. Hmm. Is this any good? Uh... Yeah. That's fine. All right. 
let's see. What is our uh, outfit going to look like here? Good lord. We go with like a Saints Row Royal Purple. Oh, it looks more blue here. I'm assuming we'll be able to change this as well, just as we could in the first game. So it's not terribly important. Let's see. Browns. I like uh, outfits with browns, but we already have like a brown vest. Look at this. We're going all fashionista up in here. Let's see. Get a nice yellow there going. Or a tan, even. Eh, maybe a red would be fitting. It would go go well with the, the jacket. <laughs> Let's see. How about these pants? Some white pants? Nah, I don't know. Let's see. Maybe we'll just have a match. Go brown? Nah, I don't know. Maybe a sort of tan yellow. Is that any good? That looks alright. Could try green. Sort of like a nice olive sort of green, like a worn green. A weathered sort of green. That's alright, but now the red and green, it's too Christmassy. Oh god! <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> that was a mistake! It was a mistake! Welcome, whoever you are! <laughs> I can't see who it is, but thank you, welcome! Oh god. What a hellhole. <laughs> Alright, fine. There we go. You know what? Fuck that. No. No thank you. We're going to the light tan. There we go. That way there's some contrast between the boots and the pants and the... Uh, the